All right, we are going to be doing some editing today. I'm going to show you how I got from this raw file to this final image that you can see here. I chose this one because I believe that it showcases some of the most important concepts and tools that I use when I edit my black and white images. I'm going to be doing this in Adobe Lightroom CC, uh, but there is nothing that I'm going to show you here that you can't do on almost any basic uh, photo editing software out there. As you can see, this photograph is a little bit underexposed. I always shoot that way, trying to protect the highlights, even though we are going to destroy them, as you'll see uh, shortly. In this case, I knew where I wanted to go with this edit at the time that I made the photograph. It's not always that case. Sometimes I see the image once I'm on the computer, but in this case, I knew what I wanted to do in the field. This was in the Great Sand Dunes National Park in Colorado. It was a sunny day, even though there were some scattered uh, clouds around that were creating some shadows every once in a while. So some of the dunes were in the shade and went dark, while some other dunes were still being lit up. So that created a very high contrast environment. And that can be really bad for black and white photography if you are in an environment with a lot of uh, textures or details like a forest. But it's uh, great when you are in open landscapes like these and the, the objects or the surfaces that are uh, they have the high contrast don't have much texture or much detail in them like uh, sand dunes. So I knew that the dune in the middle that is the main subject of this photo would be almost black, but still retaining just a little bit of detail around here. The dune in the foreground would be pretty much white. There is not much texture to it. It's out of focus anyway. And then the background would almost disappear, but leaving a little hint of uh, mountains in the, in, the, in the background. So of course, we are gonna go for a high contrast image. I'm just cropping these to square as usual, more or less that composition works. The advantage of shooting digital and having the whole raw file available is that I can recompose a little bit in post, something that I can't do with uh, the Bronica. That's why when I shoot the Bronica, I leave a little bit of a spare room on the sides just in case I see uh, things a little bit better, the composition a little bit better uh, later on on the computer. You're gonna just convert it to black and white and as I said, we're going for high contrast. So the obvious thing is to increase the contrast uh, with all the tools that we have available uh, here. As you can see, the, uh, the dune, as I said, in the middle is pretty much black at this point. We need to increase a little bit more the whites and exposure here. As you can see, the background here starts to disappear as we increase the exposure. And that's uh, what I wanted to create. And this is roughly what we are gonna do for now about the contrast. We can fine tune this uh, later. We're gonna go to the most important step of all. Point core for the levels are the most, is the most important tool. That I, that I use. What I do is usually I raise the blacks a little bit. I don't want pure blacks on my images, on my final print. I, I usually use uh, here in Lightroom 2.5 to 5, something like that. I make sure that the middle goes there. And now in the highlights, uh, this uh, I take down quite a lot, around 90, 89, something like that, depending on the image. As you can see, what it's doing is taking those uh, bright spots, the highlights, down, but also every range of highlight that falls in there in that range is going to just crash into, is going to convert into a blob. It's losing all the texture and all the detail that there could be on those uh, highlights. I'm just going to do a minor adjustment here. So as you can see, we're getting there, but this is not uh, bright enough. So we're going to increase those whites a little bit more. And now, because we did this with the levels, we can go ahead and increase our exposure quite a little bit and we are never going to reach pure white because our uh, brightest spot in the image is going to be 90% of white, something like that. So as you can see here, the background disappears even more, even more. We can go all the way until it disappears, but let's uh, leave it at a hint of the background there. That creates or reveals a little bit more of uh, texture and detail on that dune that we don't necessarily want or I don't just a little bit just once again a hint that there is something there there you go maybe a little bit less of exposure there there you go 
So as you can see, the clouds are gone. Uh, those clouds are gone and uh, all you have left is a little hint of the mountains. And uh, this image is pretty much done at this point. Maybe the blacks are a little bit higher. They are too black. A little bit more of detail on that doing, but this is pretty much done. All I could do here is to increase the clarity, maybe a little bit to increase the contrast even more. Grain, don't be shy about the grain. When we have images like these where half of the frame doesn't have any detail or texture, the same pretty much with the, the sky up here. Grain helps a lot. So what I do usually maybe 50 of grain. The size, uh, depending on the detail of the image, once again, you might want to uh, go uh, with uh, less or more. Uh, for this image, I think that 35, even 40 would be just fine, the size of the grain. The bigger the grain, uh, the, the less detail you're going to get. So if you are photographing like a tree uh, with the leaves and the trunk or maybe some other things like a wall with texture or maybe a person, maybe you want to go smaller here to 25 or something like that. And roughness, I usually go with, I don't know, 70 to 80. That looks good to me. Uh, I don't think I do anything else here. No, this is totally fine. I would maybe fine tune a little bit here. The, the dark areas because it's a little bit too dark but i i kind of like it this way and yeah this is it uh, one thing that uh, i could do if the uh, if the uh, exposure and the levels uh, couldn't make that background uh, disappear uh, what i would do is i would use a linear gradient here and you'll see let me just touch the exposure so just in mind that for some reason, uh, increasing the exposure messes up something up uh, in the rest of your uh, frame or it doesn't make that background disappear. You could use a linear uh, gradient and increase the exposure as much as you want because once again, we have the levels cut for the highlights at 90%. So it will never reach that pure white. As you can see here, there you go. The sky is completely gone and that's because it's uh, as bright as it can be. Uh, in this frame for those or in this image for uh, those levels and we can just move it around as much as we want and as you can see the the, the top of the image is going to stay gray in that 90 percent of of white so we can use that effect to remove the clouds in the sky or to even make the background disappear even more i like hinting hiding details and it adds mystery and some i don't know interest to our images so this is a tool that i use very often as well it could be the linear or it could be the circular gradient it's the same concept but yeah this is how i edited this image it was a beautiful day in colorado i hope to be back there soon making uh, new images i hope you learned a few things from this video and if you have any questions about this or any other uh, questions about my editing process or workflow please leave a comment down below i hope uh, this video was helpful please uh, leave a like and subscribe if you aren't to this channel that helps a lot i appreciate your support thank you so much for watching again and see you in the next one